Oscar, it's a pleasure to have you on. Roll Tide. How's everything going? Hello, Roger. The pleasure is mine. A real honor can be with you and all the folks of the Alabama Crimson Tide. And like you say, no, Roll Tide. Absolutely. Well, you were there uh, at Bryant Denny Stadium this past Saturday for the Crimson Tide against the Texas Longhorns. Uh, what was that experience like covering that game? And then what is the reaction in Latin America to Alabama's first loss of the year? Yeah, it was a, a huge game, no? In the schedule, always be this this match, no? Here in Mexico, the the two college, Alabama and Texas, have a great fan base in in all over the country, and in Latin America too. The countries like Colombia, Peru, Chile follow with a, a lot of passion the college football and the pro football. But in this case, this game was uh, amazing, no? We have the opportunity to be in the stadium, uh, see all this great stuff in a night game, you no, know, with with the lights, with all the the, the fans, and with this uh, rivalry, you no, know, between Texas and Alabama, and and the beginning of all the the Nick Saban era, you no, know, with that national championship, that kind of history story. Sorry, uh, in Mexico, the people always try to to keep. Know, learn about the football and the football players, of course, the coaches. Absolutely. And for you, uh, what can you tell us about your background? Uh, how long have you been covering Alabama football and what's been uh, part of the reason that you've been able to cover the Crimson Tide so well the last few years? Yes, of course. Uh, we in Claro Sports uh, broadcasting the games of the ACC since 2012. Uh, in my career, I began with uh, American football, like we say here in Mexico, no? between the soccer and uh, football, like you say. Uh, but the American football in Mexico have a, a, a great fan base. I broadcast the local games for the universities and pro teams. We have a little uh, league, uh, pro league, with only 10 teams, is the LFA. And uh, that's why it was my beginning 23 years ago. It was my first broadcasting in, in American football. And with this opportunity in Claro Sport to broadcasting and uh, be the voice of the ACC in Latin America, uh, the experience growing up. You know, uh, I am a, a big fan, a big follower of coach Nick Saban since his years in the Cleveland Browns. In pro football, I am a Steeler fan. <laughs> but when Bill Belichick and Nick Saban was a head coach Bill and a defensive coordinator in Nick Saban. I make that a kind of click you know, with the philosophy of these two greatest of all time. Uh, that's the beginning of my follow. And now, being the broadcaster and the voice in Latin America, I feel the obligation to go to Alabama and saw all this great thing, you no, know, not only in football in athletics and in the academic stuff because it's huge, you know, the Alabama University, University of Alabama, sorry, it's, it's huge, you no, know, it's, it's, it's amazing. And that's uh, part of the reason why I have a, a couple of years in a row going to Alabama. Yeah, we've certainly enjoyed having you here. Uh, of course, all that experience, like you talked about, covering the Crimson Tide remotely. What did it mean to you to get to Tuscaloosa for the first time this past year and then get to come back even this season and get to see it for yourself in person? Yeah, in the professional stuff uh, and in the personal stuff, it uh, was a dream. No, It's a dream. It, it can uh, make possible this goal because uh, in, a, in a studio, TV studio, you have that emotion, you have that passion, but being in the stadium is another thing, no? For me, in the personal stuff, a dream come true, no? And in the professional stuff, a goal, a real goal, go to, to Alabama and see all this philosophy, no? All this kind of living around the sport, no? In this case, football. No, I am a crazy guy about, about football uh, because, like I'm saying here in Mexico, in life as in football, we always need a game plan. No, and it's true outside, inside the field.
Absolutely. So again, through your broadcast, uh, so many Crimson Tide fans have been made in different Latin American countries. Uh, what's some of the feedback you hear on the broadcast you have? And as people start to learn more and more about Alabama, I imagine there are just more Crimson Tide fans every time you turn around. Yeah, with, with this opportunity to to go to Alabama and make all these uh, reportages and articles know about the, the Bert Bryan Museum, the facilities of the team, it, make the press conference, the people start to, to ask about many things, no? like uh, how looks the streets, how looks the stadium, how big is the uh, Brian Denny Stadium, no? uh, uh, many, many questions about the Crimson Tide. Like we say in Mexico, Marea Caramesi, no? the, the, the Caramesi, the color, no? in, in Spanish is the translation, Vamos Marea Caramesi. The people is a very reacting about this uh, journey because uh, with my eyes in Alabama, the camera you know, and the articles, the, the public have, the fans have this opportunity to, to feel more close to the Crimson Tide, you know? being in the, uh, on the field is amazing because the people uh, see a, a photo you know, in social media, in, in the broadcasting per se, and feel that real attraction to be in the place. You no, know? it's, it's an amazing, and all the, all the Crimson Tide here in Mexico and Latin America is growing up. It, the, the brand is bigger, you know? and uh, the passion here in Mexico, we, we have a great quote of craziness. Well, that's certainly good to hear about. Uh, for any fans that may be watching that uh, are Spanish speakers, uh, could you please, in Spanish, uh, just give us your thoughts on Alabama's performance against Texas and maybe what needs to happen for the Crimson Tide coming up this Saturday against South Florida? Again, in Spanish, please. Okay, perfect. Sí, con mucho gusto eh, para toda la gente y la comunidad hispana que nos esté escuchando. Eh, el sentimiento es el de todos, ¿no? Es una derrota que fue complicada contra Texas por, como bien lo decía el coach Nick Saban previo, ¿no? Se trataba de una prueba de saber a dónde estaban sus jugadores eh, parados, dónde estaba este equipo. El resultado es adverso, pero como lo ha dicho en el arranque de esta semana el propio coach, se tiene que ir para adelante, se aprende de estos errores como en la vida, ¿no? Y es parte del de trabajo, una gran línea ofensiva que ante una gran línea defensiva sufrió un poco. Ese, me parece, fue el breaking point, el punto de quiebra del partido, la línea ofensiva de Alabama y la línea defensiva de los Texas Longhorns. Y bueno, la actuación de Queen Edwards, ¿no? el, el coreback de los Texas Longhorns, que no tuvo error y que no tuvo presión por parte de la defensiva de Alabama, ni un solo sack, ninguna captura de coreback, pero la reflexión es positiva eh, con un equipo que es joven, con un equipo que tiene armas importantes, línea ofensiva, cuerpos receptores, el backfield, eh, la posición de coreback tal vez tiene esa incertidumbre, ¿no? pero defensivamente también los nombres y los apellidos son importantes. Y de cara al próximo partido, escuchábamos al coach Nick Saban en la conferencia de prensa, ¿no? hay que aprender de los errores y se debe dar un paso al frente para seguir sumando y nada está dicho. Estamos solo en la semana 2. This is week two. And we have many, many roads in front of us. That's certainly good to hear. Well, Oscar, thank you so much for joining us here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network. Again, we appreciate the coverage you give to Alabama Athletics, to so many people around the world. Uh, just thank you, and we look forward to visiting with you again down the road. Roll Tide. Perfect. Of course, see you the next year. Thank you, Royer. Thank you to all the people. You are wonderful with me. Let me say you, gracias. Thanks so much and roll tight.